Hello my artist friends and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to show you how I've painted this onyx uh, reef. I called it uh, onyx reef because onyx is my uh, favorite stone. Yeah you can see here a, pre a preview of what it's going to look like and reef because of the color it is teal and green and dark blue and yeah that's that's my favorite color combo with the gold. So to first start, uh, I've primed my entire canvas with a teal blue uh, acrylic paint and I've made two coats just to making sure that I have a really uh, deep uh, teal blue and with without any uh, brush strokes showing through my white base. So to get more depth into my painting and add details, I'm going to use the phthalo blue and black and mix with some water only. And I'm going to play with the consistency of the paint and water. Uh, if I want more details, I use the paint directly. And if I want more smudge, like, you sh like I show here, a smudge look, an ombre, uh, really diffuse color, I'm going to put much more water into it and it's going to be more transparent. These steps uh, is great to have a rough shape of what the painting will look like after. So yeah, it really helps to bring elements together and have a beautiful composition. So I will basically do the same technique all the way. Uh, it is with my dry brush and some water, uh, water red paint. Here I'm focusing on this little uh, agate geode part. And I really love to, to make this type of uh, details in my painting. And here we, go, we are going to have like a river of geode with some tiny crystals. In this painting, this, this is not real crystals. This will be the piece of broken glass that I've bought in my uh, local artwork uh, art supply store. You can find also this type of stone in um, home decor, uh, like candle section store. And you see, I'm only using one color, uh, the dark uh, blue to give, to get this effect of a stone. And you can really build your color uh, layer by layer from uh, darker and darker since you are satisfied. Now I'm going to use some white acrylic just to have more highlights and then I'm going to also use my Posca pens to really opacify the, the white and get a much brighter uh, and detailed uh, look to my painting. And here you will see I'm going to do the same technique as my dark blue but with the white is that I'm doing uh, simple shapes and really uh, blended uh, areas and then I'm going to go on top with the Posca to redefine everything. I try to add as much details as I can with my white. And here you see I'm using a small, uh, a tiny bit of blue 
wash that I mix with water just to add more depth into my color and add a little bit more blue. You cannot really see it uh, on camera, but it really shows uh, in real life. And here you see I'm using, as I said, my Posca to bring more details and more highlights to my painting. Then I'm going to bring some beige and brown color just to add more details and yeah I'm going to draw some cracks directly with my paint not with not that much water so it is not transparent I think beige is really going well with the blue and I really like this color Now I had a dark brown uh, background to my geode part where I'm going to place the crystals just so uh, where I'm going to apply the gold it is really pop out because of the black uh, background we have and here I, uh, I've tried to make some shading just to make also the little details pops out a little more so here I've already made my um, crystal geode part. If you want to know how I made this, I have videos on Patreon about that. I have full courses about that and also about how I paint, what paint I use, what mediums I use to paint and do that. I will link my Patreon page down in the description. So here I'm going to tape this area because I was supposed to do uh, this area uh, after I varnish my piece because I wanted to have a matte varnish uh, painting uh, finish, sorry, and I don't want my matte varnish to go on top of my uh, glossy uh, geode part. Here you see I've added a little bit of yellow ochre on top of my painting on certain areas and now I'm going to sign my work before it gets um, varnish. So I'm going to use a spray varnish for this one. It is a matte varnish and I will show you the before and after. So for this, I'm going to go in my garage because it is a kind of smelly varnish with a solvent base. So you really need to work in a ventilated area. And yeah, so I'm doing uh, two thin coats of this varnish. And here you see the difference on the left it is non varnish and it's, it is a little bit shiny and on the right it is varnish so now i'm going to remove my tape and then apply the gold leaf on top of my designs i've also added these tiny lines here just to get uh, more gold in onto my piece so here I'm using my gilding paste, uh, this is from PBO, this is a gold leaf glue, you can use uh, I think uh, any brand, water based brand. And then uh, when it dries you can then apply your uh, gold leaf. I'm going to link you down in the description what leaf I use for this one. And you see how the gold really pops out because of my uh, dark brown edges that I've made uh, just before. And then I'm using my vacuum cleaner to remove any gold dust. So uh, since it is copper leaf, you really need to apply a varnish on top. So here I'm using a solvent based varnish made for metal uh, leaf. If you don't do that, uh, your copper leaf can oxidize and, be and became uh, green and 
non-shiny and really not beautiful so you really need to protect them and here is the full piece uh, finish hope you've liked this video thank you for your support thank you to all of my patrons here who support my channel who support my art and yeah i wish you all a great day and see you for another video bye bye guys <laughs>